morning, grade 11s. Today we're going to be looking at exercise 611. And they say that from the front view and the auxiliary view of a combination of solids, you actually have a prism and a pyramid in one. And they say, draw the, redraw the given views. So that will be the auxiliary and the front view. Draw a left view and a top view. So it's going to be a left view and top view with hidden detail, and it's not going to be cut at all. Then net for Afrikaans okies. Beseafde. Jy moet die voorhandsig en die hulpansig oorteken en dan moet jy linker en die boonsig gaan maak en al die versteekte en verborgen lijnen moet gewys word, maar hy word glad nie gesneid. Then when we go look at the diagram, you can clearly see here that the front, if we go to the front view here, there is the prism, there is the pyramid, that the center that runs through the object, or objects rather, Okay, is at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane, okay, and that that same center is parallel with the back or the vertical plane. Then here, the auxiliary view, uh, because it's in first angle orthographic, you're actually looking at it from this side, so you're seeing the base of the pyramid, and then behind that is the prism. So if we go to the auxiliary, you can actually follow this line through, then you will see that this is the hexagon for the pyramid. And the other one that's actually uh, running here, that is the hexagon for the prism. They're exactly the same size, but just turned on each other. Now, remember, when they give you a side as 30, okay, as the side is always the same as the radius. So you're going to set your compass to 30 when you construct the auxiliary view. Then the width of the prism is 27, and the length, if you will, of the pyramid is 68. So it's just those three measurements that you have to take into account. All right, so when you go to the diagram sheet, you can actually see that the point B is the only thing that's given on the page. For those of you who are drawing on a blank sheet, this point B is 55 from the border and it's 50 from the margin to the left, okay? So that point B is the only thing that's given to you. Actually, you have to construct everything from scratch. So the best place to start is with the auxiliary view. Now, I'm going to set my compass to a radius of 30, and I'm going to construct that circle. Then I'm going to start with the pyramid. So I'm going to draw a construction line at 60 degrees through that one. So make sure that you use a 60 degree set square. And then you do the usual. You put your compass down on that point with a radius of 30. You swing it round, and where you mark the points on the side of the circle, you can actually connect your points. So you're going to mark the points you put at the bottom point, swing it round, and that will give you the side points for your hexagon. The same there, swing it round. You can draw the arc if you want, but if you just mark it on the circle, that's efficient. And then you can go and connect the points. So that will be the hexagon for a pyramid at 60 degrees. Then next you want to go and construct the same hexagon, but at 30 degrees on the same circle. So the same difference. You put your compass down on the point, you swing it round, and you mark it there, and you mark it there. Put your compass down there, you swing it round, and you mark the points on the sides, and then you can go and connect them. You will actually see that the hexagon for the prism is behind that of the pyramid in the auxiliary view. So the red for the rest of the exercise, when you see red, that will be for the pyramid, and blue will be for the prism. All right, so next we want to construct the front view, so we're going to start with the prism, and I'm going to take the sides and the middle point there, and this side, I'm just going to project it. Again, you can make these lines as long as you need them to be, and that will obviously be at 30 degrees. Then I'm going to place down an X2, Y2 to separate the auxiliary from the front view. Now, they actually do, do not require it, but it is safe to do so. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to measure and plot your points. Okay, but you can still do it if you don't add it. Then I'm going to mark down the 27. So from my XY line, I'll see I've decided to place my front view on the X2, Y2. The reason for that is to conserve space. So I made this distance there by the centimeter, but you can make it whatever you want. Okay, it doesn't have to be a centimeter, but it is a bit of a tight space. So don't make that gap too big. And then you just draw it solid straight away by marking down the 27 there. Then I want to go and construct the pyramid. I'll do the same thing. 
I go to the red one here, and I take the four points on the hexagon. I project it as long as I need it to be. And then all I have to do is measure from that line 68, and I take the four base points, okay, which is in fact six, but two of them are behind. And I just connect it to the apex there where it touches on the prism, and that will give me the solid for the front view, and my front view is in fact now complete. The way I'm going to approach this drawing, I'm going to draw the prism first, and then we're going to do the pyramid after that. I find that makes your life a little bit easier. You can do it as one object, uh, but again, I find it safer to do them one part at a time. Okay, so next you do want to go and add your XY lines. So the XY line that is running below the front view, again, that gap doesn't matter. I made mine one centimeter again, but if your line rests on that point, it's fine as well. So the X1 separates the front view here from the top view, and this X1, Y1 will separate the front view on the left side here with the side view that's going to sit here. So the left view will be sitting here on the right, and the top view will be below because it's in first angle orthographic projection. Now, because we're going to be doing the prism first, I'm actually going to remove the pyramid so that we can focus just on the prism. So to plot the points, you do the same as before, but this time I'm going to do it without numbering just to show you that you can. So if we go to the front and auxiliary view, again, I'm not measuring from the view to the view. I am measuring from this XY line here to the view. So remember, we're focusing on the blue prism. So try and ignore the red. So from the XY, okay, here in the middle, the first distance we have to measure is this one for that middle point, all right? And then the second one will be for this one and this one. So that's the distance away from the XY. The third one is this one and this one. Again, that distance. So that's the third one. And then the fourth one is back in the middle all the way across. So you've got four distances that you have to measure. So some students, instead of plotting them one line at a time, what they do is they take those four distances and they go from the XY line and they go one, two, three, and four, and they draw these four construction lines. It just makes it a little bit easier to plot all the other points because a lot of them fall on the same lines. And then you go from your front view and you take all six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, here, and you take them down and that will give you this grid. And usually then you can actually see the points. Now, how do I know which ones fall, where, fall on which line? Well, again, if we go to the auxiliary view, you can see that the side points on this point here, okay, and this point here. So both of these are vertical lines going down. They've got two measurements each that we have to plot. So from the XY, we've got one and two. So we've got those two. Those are the two that's in the middle. So this one is first, the second, the third, and the fourth. So these two will fall on the second and third level. So if you follow those lines down, you can see they go second and third, second and third. But you've got two other sets as well. So both of these and both of these at the bottom. Okay, if you take them down, will fall on the second and the third level. And that's why we have four points plotted on that line and four on this one. Then, if we go to the middle line, we've got two points, but if I go back over two XYs, that's the first distance I have to take to this blue point, and then I go all the way back, and that's the distance I have to take for that one. But again, both of these distances will fall on both from both of these points. So if I go down, then you can see there you actually have two of each. Okay, so the first line you've got one, two, Okay, sorry, one, two, and the second line, you've got one, two, okay, and usually by then you can actually see it, so if I go to my front view, we're going to see this base first, okay, but before we do that, I also want to project and find the points for the left view, because it saves time doing them at the same time, you can use the bounce line here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same four levels, I'm going to bounce out of the bounce line, take it across to the left view here on the right, and then I'm just going to take the same base points from the front view here, I'm going to take it across, and I get the same points plotted here on the side view. It just saves a lot of time. Then we want to go and connect. Now, in both cases, 
going to the left view, I'm looking at from the left side, I'm going to see this first base, the other one is behind. So that's going to be, a lot of that's going to be even detail. So I'm going to see this base, so there I've drawn it solid. The same from the top, if I'm looking at from the top, I'm also going to see this base, so I've drawn that one solid as well. So in both cases, that's the base that you're going to see. Then you can go and you can add the rest of the solid or dark lines, okay? So you're only going to see one side of the base, and then you're going to connect the corners to connect the two bases together, the same here. You're gonna draw the bottom part of the bottom base, and then you're going to connect it to the top base. So now basically it will look like this when it's drawn. If I remove the projection lines, okay? You can see it looks like this. So last but not least, you've got to add the hidden detail as well to show everything that is complete. So there you can see the rest of the bottom base that's not going to be seen, and the same here. And then just like the front, you've got to connect it to the back corner. And that is the prism with the hidden detail added. Right, now that we have the prism, uh, we can focus on the pyramid, okay? So I'm going to add that back in, but this time, destructing your view, I'm actually going to go and I'm going to remove the prism so that we can just focus on the pyramid for, for a little bit. Okay, so we're going to basically follow the same method for the pyramid. So first of all, I'm going to take this these levels again. So if I go to the auxiliary view, okay, and this time we're focusing on the red auxiliary, so that will be the hexagon that's in red there for the pyramid. Okay. So if we measure from the X, Y, we've got one, two, three distances we have to find from the X, Y. So this level, one, second level, third level, okay? So we actually, in here you can see them. So I go one, two, and three, and you just mark them down. So you can measure here on the X, Y, put down the points and just draw the construction lines across. And then to save time, I bounce off the bounce line and take it vertically up for the right left view as well okay and then you just take to find the apex obviously the apex will be in the middle and please take note from the auxiliary from the xy both the apex on the middle point and these two side points will have the same distance away from the xy okay so to find the apex i just take it down and i mark it on the middle line and i mark it on the middle there then to find the other two so now i'm talking about these side points okay so if we go to the front view from this point, if I follow the line, that's the distance we want to take, okay? But we've got two of them, okay? And here you can see it. I've actually plotted both. So there's two of them in that view, and there's two of them in that view. So here's two, and here's two, okay? Next, we want to go and find these two base points, but remember there's also two behind it. But if we follow the construction line, we take one distance and then another distance. So both this point and this point has to be measured. So we take one distance, two distances, and we're going to plot them on the same constructions coming from those two points. Okay. And there you can see it. So I measured on the same line, two sets, one, two distances. And on this one, one, two distances as well. Okay. Now, because it's a pyramid, we can now just go and connect the points, but for we're going to leave it in construction for now. So I've made it green, but please take note, leave this in construction after you've connected it. So if we remove the projections, obviously you are not able to remove the projections, so you have to focus really, really well. Okay, and I'm gonna add the prism back in. Now the reason why I'm showing you this, okay, is if we go to the views, you can now see that some of the information for the perm is going to be obstructed by this prism, which is here on top and here in front. So it's obstructing some of the information perm. So we're just going to focus on the part that's not being obstructed. We can immediately go and draw the outline dark. That's safe. Okay, so we can go and draw this outline nice and dark going round, and the same for this one. Okay. And then we can go and draw the corners that are seen. So we're drawing these corners dark from the base points until it disappears behind the prism. Okay, there, there, and there. 
and the same for the top view here. So we just draw it dark until it disappears behind the prism. The rest of the pyramid information is actually going to be hidden detail. Okay, so everything that you see here, everything that's behind that prism will be hidden detail. Okay, the same here with those little with this little point there. And that's all you have to do. Go and make those parts hidden detail, and then you are done. And it will look like this.